This season I really tried to forget the, the fright, the, the fear of confronting with such a tremendous legacy and with such an incredibly clever woman. So I threw myself with utter passion in like embracing her bold and provocative and sensational language. The turban was the symbol of resistance France and so we had this hand knit it was actually hand-knit wool. So we had that on one side, and then we had like the chic of felts, which were very much about 30s Scaparelli as well. You know, she really invented that look. a little bit deeper into the archives and a, and a little bit more fearlessly. He told me beforehand that, um, you know, he, he knows that Scaparelli comes very close to camp and um, it can be dangerous to be too literal, but he also said, why the hell not? Like, this is his job, and uh, so he just dove right in. I love those little fringes. They're made from feathers, they're made from can you believe turkey feathers? Because nowadays we can't use exotic feathers, but then we dye them and glycerine them and curl them and everything. So they made these cute little fringes in lots of different colors. I madly in love with Stephen because the creative process with him is so interesting and exciting. And this season the hats really melted with the outfit, with each silhouette. They were really integral part of the look. It's the party hat that everybody wears, age two, until about age seven. Um, but with the little Sarge embroidered version of it in sort of taffeta. Fabrics and colors are the starting point of the collection. So that is much fun, you know, to, to dig and find the best fabrics, to have them made especially for us, and to have them dyed in the most gorgeous colors. I thought it was super, super Schiaparelli, you know, using shocking pink and those great kind of odd 30s color combinations, and of course the Stephen Jones hats being so integral to the proportions and all looking so right. The uh, tinsel sleeves and the, of course the giant shoulders, you could see that this was all 19, late 1930s and 40s occupied France uh, going on in this collection. But if you pulled off the outerwear, this extraordinary outerwear, you had some day wear pieces that could actually work, you know, without being so flashy, so over the top that you could, you know, wear for longer periods of time that uh, weren't one season wonders at all. There were a lot of pieces there that um, I could see women wearing easily every day here in Paris. That is an ostrich feather, bolero. The feathers have been treated with a very you know, ancient technique with glycerin to look wet and you know, to mock the monkey fur. Very, very Schiaparelli, yes. The sort of proportions and the kind of odd subversions, like having little <laughs> a pretty velvet that turns out to be depicting rats or <laughs> Um, pigeons instead of doves, all those kind of weird urban animals was kind of a great way to channel the unexpected side of Schiaparelli. I think it's a real homage of Siap, incredible homage of Siap, because really the spirit is, here, is there.
each piece needs to be wearable ultimately because we have like clients that are seeking they are now in Paris for Haute Couture Week and all these ladies are really seeking for something unique and special. It was very like delicate and interesting and the shapes and the music even the Hitchcock kind of mood at the beginning of the show and a couple of dresses I really like are for museums and the one, my, my favorite is the pink one. very easy to be intimidated by the kind of weight and the burden of the past and you know it takes a certain amount of courage to uh, liberate yourself from it. 